What's up guys, this is Teddy. Welcome to my YouTube channel. So in this video, we are actually going to install Postgres SQL and we are going to turn our actual models that we just coded into real Postgres database tables. And if you don't know what tables are, all tables are, are pretty much Excel spreadsheets, except they are in a database. And the best part about it is that Spring Data is going to do all of this for us. We don't have to actually make our tables. We don't have to actually assign all the ints and do all this technical stuff. Spring Data just literally does everything for us and we don't have to do hardly any work. And as a programmer, that is really awesome. So the first thing that you want to do, obviously, is you want to go to the Postgres website and you want to install Postgres SQL. And it's super simple to do. All you do is you go to the download section, whatever operating system that you're using. I'm using Windows right now. And then you want to go to download the installer. Next, you want to choose the actual Windows operating system. More than likely, if you're on Mac, choose the Mac, Linux, choose Linux. But if you're on Windows, just like me, just go to here and choose the latest version. What's going to happen is you're going to get a nice little download that pops up down in your browser. And then after that, it takes almost no time to download. Just go ahead, click it, and it will come up. So my screen's gonna go blank because it's requiring ad administrative privileges. Okay, so next thing that you will see is you're going to see this uh, setup wizard. Choose everything. I would choose everything if I were you, but if you don't want to install the stack builder, don't install the stack builder because I've actually never used that, but it takes up no space. So it's sometimes it's good just to install it anyway. And go ahead and walk through that. And because I already have an existing directory, I'm not going to actually install it um, because I don't want to corrupt my data, but it's super simple and it's just going to assign you a password just go through there. And the best part about it too is that a GUI is already built into IntelliJ. So even though we installed a GUI and everything as well too, you don't even need to actually use the GUI that they provide for you. A lot of times it's more featurific, but the next thing that you want to do is you want to actually go into IntelliJ, click on the database right here. If you don't get the database, you can hit shift shift and then go up here you can type in database and you can get the actual database tab just by clicking that shift shift up there and the password and the username that you use to set up postgres is what you want to put into here so go to data source go to postgres and go down here and type in the actual password that you used um, i'm not going to show you my password although it's really not that much of a security risk, but uh, can't be too sure, or you can't, there's no such thing as too much security. So I'm just going to go ahead, bring my uh, box over here, and I'm going to um, actually put in my password. So my user is Postgres, yours could be different, and this is going to allow it so that you can use it in here. And once again, it's really easy to, to use just in IntelliJ. And also it's very, very powerful. The next thing that you want to do is you want to right click on Postgres. You want to go to new, you want to go to actual database and you want to type in an actual database that you want. And I am just going to call this Pokemon API course. So now go down and click okay. Okay, so the next thing that you want to do is you want to go to the little elephant symbol up here. You want to click this. If you don't see the actual database that you created, although you should, you can click it and go ahead and check it right here. The next thing that you want to do is you want to go ahead, you want to click this zero out of three, click all schemas to make sure that you see all the actual um, settings in the actual tables, otherwise that you won't. And the tables that we are about to create are going to be located within this actual public thing right here. And we don't have any database tables because we haven't actually set up any of our application properties. 
and we haven't actually run the program yet. So what we want to do is we want to add what are called annotations. These little uh, ampersand followed by these letters are called annotations. And by, by adding annotations, it's going to make it so that Spring Boot can essentially see these models and give you, or it's essentially you saying, hey, uh, Spring Data JPA, I want these models to be created in the database. Would you just go ahead and create these tables for me so I don't have to type in a bunch of SQL? And Spring Data is going to say, gotcha. So let's go ahead and let's add the necessary annotations. The first one that you're going to want is this thing called Entity. Entity is going to let the actual uh, database know that this is an entity that needs to go into the database. And just for good measure, I am going to add an all args constructor here from Lombok. I'm also going to add a no args constructor. And this is going to make it so that we have all our bases covered and we have all of the necessary constructors in case we need to actually use this model down the line, which we definitely will. So the next thing that's going to happen is that a lot of times you will get an error, you will get a squiggly line. And that means that you're going to need to add what's called a primary key. So if you don't know what a primary key is, a primary key is essentially a unique identifier. And it's also how we form relationships in databases too, which we will talk about here in a little bit. So an ID has to be unique and a primary key is very important because of that. You could have millions of records in a database and you need an ID or you need this primary key, which is a fancy database call that is going to make every single entry unique because you could possibly have duplicates. The second thing is that we're going to have this uh, annotation called generated value and it's going to have a what's called a strategy and our strategy type is going to be identity. <clears throat> you may be wondering what, <laughs> like that makes no sense, what is this generated identity? Uh, basically, this is going to make it so that JPA is not going to increment your primary key for you. The actual database is going to handle the generation of the primary key. See, when you add records to a database, once again, you need to generate unique values, and this is going to make it so that uh, Postgres is going to generate the unique value for you, and you don't need to actually do it yourself. Okay, so... Next, we're going to do this to our review. Review is going to be pretty much the same exact thing. You could actually just copy and paste this if you want to, but I'm just gonna go in here and type it in manually just for the sake of learning. Then I'm gonna go down here, I'm gonna go entity. And once again, we're gonna do the exact same thing. No different, we're just gonna go down here and then we're going to go to generated value. And our strategy is once again going to be generation type identity and we're not done just yet um, if you are not too familiar with how the folder structure of Java works what you need to do is you need to go back down into your main then you need to go into your resources not the actual Java file then you need to go into your application properties the application properties is actually kind of an important file and this is going to be pretty much where we set up the settings for our database. And this may look a little confusing right now, but you will get it just here in a second. But we want to go down here and we want to add the setting or we want to add the actual address for our Postgres database. This may look a little confusing and this may look a little cryptic, but this is essentially just the database address for our uh, local uh, database. So go down here and you need to add a slash and you need to actually add the name of the database. So the name of our actual database is Pokemon API course. So we're going to go here. We're going to go Pokemon API course. We go down here, we go spring and we're going to do the exact same thing. So spring data source. And if you don't want to type this out, I'm actually going to have this on my GitHub you can go ahead and grab it there. Just make sure that you uh, actually change your credentials. 
and I'm just going to put actual uh, bogus data. I'm going to go spring data source and my password is just going to be good old test. Although if this is your local environment, it probably doesn't matter. But if this is the actual, if this is an actual production database, I would not have something that simple. Okay, so last thing is we need to actually tell the application properties the driver and ours is going to be org postgres uh, driver so you need to actually declare your driver as well too okay so the last thing that we need to do is we need to set what's called the ddl auto and the way that you set the ddl auto is you go down here go into your application properties you set jpa hibernate so we're going to go gpa.hibernate.ddl slash uh, hyphen auto then we will go update and what's going what this does and this is actually very important is this makes it so that jpa will automatically create all the tables for you if they were updated otherwise it will expect you to create your own tables this is actually very important right here just make sure that you don't skip it so next thing we need to go ahead we need to go to our start let's go ahead here and go ahead run it see what happens and let's go ahead and make sure that our database is created another thing that you could also do as well too is you could have it so that spring data jpa um, and this is personal preference some people don't actually like this you can make it so that it actually sets up your sql and you can see the actual sql commands being created and let's go ahead here let's go run it So everything looks good. Next thing you want to go to the database tab, hit the refresh button right here. And would you look at that? We now have two tables in our database. They don't have any data in them just yet, but we are hooked up. We are ready to go. We can now start creating our controllers. Everything is looking good. Anyways, hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to hit that like button. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching.